Hey, what's going on, TLC? It's your boy PT coming at you with another word of the week. This week's story is surge of immigrants at the southern border. What do we do? How do Christians respond to this constant theme of immigration issues that keeps popping up in our country's uh, narrative every uh, so often? All right. So let me give you just kind of run down the story. So the news this past week, we see a surge in immigration at our southern borders. The reason it has made the news is because the, the White House administration, this um, policy is easing off on the immig immigration controls this past year, uh, which ended up resulting in a massive influx of immigrants into the United States. And what makes this news more notable is because a lot of these immigrants are unaccompanied children, right? And the expected rate is that about 117,000 un unaccompanied children will show up at the border this year alone. So. The White House has gotten a lot of flack for reopening detention centers that everyone hated during the Trump administration, right? And what we see uh, because of this immigration story is once again, a divided rhetoric in our um, political atmosphere. So on one end, we have the political spectrum of people saying, we should not turn away anyone who is in need of help, right? And on the other hand, we, we have um, people saying, uh, we don't want to create policy that would incentivize immigrants to come to this country illegally. Okay, so that's that's the that's the the thing that's been going on in the in the news cycle this past uh, week or two. And so, uh, what's my analysis of this? You know, uh, how does a Christian go about responding to this immigration crisis happening at our borders? Right. See, because it's interesting that even among Christians circles, the topic is also divisive. Because on one hand. We have the side that argues that we have a responsibility as humanity to care for the vulnerable and the hurting. But on the other hand, we have a side that argues that we have a responsibility to protect and care for one's community and nations, right? So these are both valid concerns. You know, if, if, if you are a living person, these are real valid concerns. And Because on one hand, we ought to be hospitable and compassionate to homeless refugees. As human beings, we are members of the global community. We should therefore seek to help our fellow citizens of humanity. When one of us hurts, the rest of us hurts, right? And on the other hand, we wish we, we, we wish to seek the welfare of our own community first. We got to take care of our family. Um, we, we are part of the global community as a whole, but God has also called us into our local communities, which is our families, our neighborhoods, our cities. And we should seek to protect our families, cities, and nations from potential threats. Right, so we got these two extremes here, and what do we do? What do we do in, in, in regards to these these things? So, um, you know, like I don't know what your rhetoric, or even you know, if this is even a topic important to you, but I thought you know maybe I'll bring it up. Here's my pastoral take on it. What do we do about the uh, about the topic of immigration as Christians? How do we respond to that? Um, my first thing is this: we need to examine or re-examine our vilification of immigrants in our own hearts, right? So, a lot of the rhetoric that's been going on about immigrants have really painted a nasty picture, like a, a, an exclusive picture. Like for example, they're not like us. We can't trust those people. We have no idea what's happening. Uh, we all know what they're bringing in. We all know their motives, their, their intentions. They could be killers for all we know. And is it true that receiving immigrants, we risk the high chance of receiving people of questionable backgrounds as well? The answer is definitely yes. So I understand the caution of pause in discerning the correct way to receive immigrants. However, with that said, when our language is used to vilify a member of humanity as if somehow we are free from our own self-centered acts ourselves, um, we do a disservice to the name of Jesus Christ and we ourselves forgot what the gospel stands for. See, we forget that we are sinners saved by grace. The cross levels the playing field for us all. So imagine the arrogance when we make sweeping statements of distinctions, like we're not, they're not like one of us, you know, we don't know, they're questionable. As Jesus walked in our shoes as humanity, we ought to walk in the shoes of those who trek hundreds of miles for even the hint of a chance to have a better life for themselves and their children, you know? Um, and then, so that's, that's my first thing is we gotta really be careful about the language we use when we begin to describe and talk about our immigrants that are coming into uh, through our borders, illegal or not, right? Uh, but the second thing I want to I want to kind of address for believers is we should we can disagree about specific policies of immigration, but we ought to at the same time bend over backwards to care for anyone, any immigrant in this country, illegal or not. 
Okay, we, we, we can disagree on the specific policies of how we want immigrations to happen, what, what the what, what the policies should be, but we should we should do everything we can to care for any immigrant who's in this country. I would say illegal or not. See, many a time God says to take care of the widows, the orphans, and the foreigners in the Old Testament. You guys know that? Uh, one of the ways in which he reminds his people is always care for the widows, the orphans, and the foreigners. So the unifying traits of these three uh, groups, widows, orphans, and, and foreigners, is that they are in a position whereby they cannot do anything to help themselves or their cause, and they need a hand of grace to step in and to deliver them out of their current predicament. See, this is the and this is the picture of the spiritual condition of the human heart. We are in a position whereby we cannot do anything to save our own souls, and thus we need a hand of grace to deliver us. So, God told His people to remember the widows, the orphans, and the foreigners. Because if God's people remember these characters, then it's a clear indication that they remember their own plight and how they needed God to deliver them out of their situation. So, to forget them, the widows, the orphans, and the foreigners is to forget that you were once lost and in need of salvation, that you were once in a position that you can't do anything to save yourself, and you needed a hand of help and grace to come pull you out. So, see, that's my thing. So you, you, we can disagree about the policies, but we, we should always be weary, weary to, we should, we should pause on the idea to turn someone in our neighborhood away who happens to be an immigrant, illegal or not, right? You got to love those whom God's placed here. That's really it. You can disagree about the policies. You can disagree about how it's done. But once the immigrants are here, once people are here, you got you to step into this picture of love and service to your neighbors, those who are different, those who are here. The Bible says this, you know, remember the widows, the orphans, and foreigners, for once, for you were once in Egypt, and you needed a hand of saving. Okay? So that's my word. Um, I hope that's helpful for you guys, at least in this time, to uh, consider that. And let's not jump to extremes when we think about these things, okay? But let's uh, jump to the cross and jump to the picture of grace to guide us and to move us. You guys have a great one. I love you. And I'll see you guys soon. Like what you see? Come check us out on our YouTube channel. We're called to love God, love people, and serve the world. We post regularly every week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. 10 a.m. Children's Ministry, 12.30 p.m. for English Ministry. Check out our website at www.wearetruelove.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.